So the first part of this uh, series uh, seemed to get a lot of interest, or what I think is a lot of interest, so I'm going to continue it. Um, in part one, we covered the top rack of the loose head storage, so now we'll move on to the bottom. And I've got three heads uh, that I want to cover first, at least get recorded first, because um, <laughs> actually talked with another buddy, uh, another YouTuber. Um, you're going to be working up a little trade with them, so they're going to be packed up and sent out probably today or tomorrow. So figure get them on, uh, get footage of them before they leave the shop. So without uh, further delay, we'll start here. All right, so the first one here, I'm wearing some gloves this time because I could not wash the, uh, the M Pro 7 off my hands uh, <laughs> very easy last time. <laughs> Took forever. So if you're gonna smarten up and wear some gloves. So first, uh, first one that's actually going to be traded, but uh, it's been in the collection for a little while. It's a plum, so it's a round lug jersey. Uh, pulls in pretty nice condition. A little bit of a uh, little bit of chipping and damage, but really nothing, nothing too crazy. A little bit of surface rust, but no real, real deep pitting. Um, nice clean plum stamp. And this is one that's. I love the plum geometry. That's a nice high center line that goes down to a nice keen edge. Um, the Connecticut patterns that I've got have that same, you know, real similar geometry. Um, and I really like it. I think it's a uh, thing. It looks good. I think it performs well. So, yeah. So, whole, uh, so Ryan, hopefully you like this. Like it in your collection. <laughs> Get it oiled up before I send it out to you. I've always just really liked the round lugs on the jerseys um, and the Rockaways too. I just think they look really neat. And the next one that's uh, going to him in trade is going to be that, that heavier plum national. I think he uh, took a liking to it and Gonna do some work on it, so hopefully, uh, hopefully he records it. Ram sure you're gonna watch, so definitely make a video on whatever you do with it. I'd love to see, love to see it turn into something. So, Yeah, that's a patent applied for. This is one that when I got it, I had already covered it in the um, the national video, but it was in uh, someone had taken an angle grinder to it to like clean up the rust, and there were some like a lot of variations in the uh, the surface of the axe. So I cleaned it up as best I, I could at the moment. Um, it needs some more work, but it, it's definitely still worth putting some effort into. Um, I kind of restored the, the lines on the on the pole a little bit. That's where I focused most of my attention. Um, I kind of gave back those those cool bevels or chamfers on the on that you know nationals are kind of noted for. Um, but the bit needs to be thinned out a bit more too. So I'm sure he will have a fun time doing all that. And if you've watched my other videos, you know my uh, Tommy X addiction. So. I had one kicking around that's uh, gonna should be a good fit for a project that he's working on. So, yeah, I just I love Tommy axes. <laughs> I think they're so handy. And when I come across them, uh, when I'm kind of searching eBay and they're a good deal, I have a really hard time passing them up. Um, I just think they're such a versatile head. They're they're heavy enough where they can actually get some work done, but they're light enough where you know they're they're not not super super heavy. Um, yeah, I just really like them. But I think they really serve like a, a forest axe size roll really well. I'm um, kind of using the Grand Sword's, uh Brooks terminology. You'll see my favorite one when I cover it in the, uh, the ones that are hung, I guess. So. Get a little coat of coat of oil on this. Help protect it in the shipping. Hopefully, it'll look a little nicer when he pulls it out of the box. It 
Definitely won't smell nicer. I'm Pro 7 is not the, uh, the nicest smelling oil, but it's a uh, it's nice. It's a nice lubricant, nice uh, rust preventative. So yeah, that's what I got sitting at the back of the bench. So that's the main thing. <laughs> it's a nice stamp on this one. Um, not too worn off. This is the ones that doesn't have the uh, the no TA on the back. But it does have both of the claws broken off, so it makes it a really good candidate for some of the uh, customization projects that I like doing, and I think he kind of plans on doing a similar similar type job with this too. So, again, love to see him do a video on that. All right, next three. This is a nice lineup. <laughs> uh, Sometimes I, I've got enough access sitting around that sometimes I forget about them a little bit. Um, they're kind of just sitting there chilling. Uh, but this one here is a True Temper. So it's a, it's a hatchet size uh, head. Probably, it's a heavier hatchet, so maybe just under two pounds. Pound and three quarters, maybe two pounds, but it's real clean. Um, Nice bevels on it. Um, really no pitting. Previous owner kind of had a interesting grind on it, but I think that can be corrected fairly easily. Toes a little bit shorter than the heel, but I plan on fixing that at some point. And just look at that clean Kelly Axon tool work stamp. Charleston, West Virginia. I believe it's Charleston, WVA, and then USA. But I'm gonna get it oiled up and kind of see it in all its uh, glory, I guess. <laughs> yeah, this one was a, a good deal, and the stamps on it were just so clean. I like the ones that are stamped on both sides, too. It's kind of neat. The pole was so clean, too. I don't see a weight stamp on it anywhere, but I think weight stamps are more common on the larger heads. You don't see, I don't usually see them as much on the uh, the hatchets or house axes. So yeah, a little bit of remnant of some of that original black paint. Just real nice patina overall. Yeah, neat one to have in the collection. All right, now the next one. If, like I said, if you watch the channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of plums. So I was excited when I came across this one online. Um, plums are less common. Uh, most axes are less common in just the straight three pound um, weight. So this one here is is just that. You can see it's a three pound Dayton pattern. Um, little bit of damage on the pole. Nothing crazy. That's that's definitely definitely within the um, the realm of what I probably wouldn't fix if I was hanging it for myself. Um, that wouldn't bother me for just using it. And for me, the, the, the patina that's developed around that or on that outweighs the want to have that cleaned up. There's kind of a, a tipping point, a balancing act that you got to figure out when you're looking at heads like that. Um, like, is the, is the pull damage so bad that you want to, you know, forego whatever patina that's on that, that part of the axe at least, or can you live with it? And that's for whoever uh, owns the axe to decide. Because <laughs> my determination might be different than yours versus the next guy's. So. Yeah, you can see it all, all freshly oiled up. Nice crisp stamp. Gotta love that. And again, just like on that... Uh, that round lug jersey. Nice high center line. Nice geometry. I like it. I cover, definitely covered in a uh, it followed me home video before. It's a what Kelly Works Wood Slasher. So I believe if my history lessons are right and <laughs> research is right, uh, True Temper acquired Kelly Works in 1965 ish. So if uh, you've come across an axe that's just stamped 
you know, Wood Slasher or Kelly Works, um, and no True Tamper, True Temper, uh, you know, naming on it. It's probably pre-65. Um, if you have better a better timeline on that, let me know. Um, one of the websites that I, I enjoy using for finding information out about it is uh, Yesteryear Tools. They've got great information and examples of uh, like old stamps and, and logos and some history of when uh, when uh, you know, axe companies were acquired other ones. Um, like most other industries, they buy each other out and combine, and that's how you come across the you know the. True Tempers, you know, True Temper, Flint Edge, Kelly Works, it's, they borrowed the names from a bunch of the, the, you know, the companies that they, a couple of the companies that merged. So, yeah, it's a nice one. It's a Dayton pattern. This is one that I found at what, the, my local, local flea market, same place that I just did the uh, flea market uh, axe hunting video at. So, I've had good luck there. Same place I found both of my, uh, National Pattern Hatchets at. Same place I found a number of other heads that I'll, I'll kind of show you when I get to them here too, so. Yeah. I like it. So one, two, three. Alright. Alright, so the first one up here is... Uh, this jersey pattern. This one's this one I picked up a while ago. Uh, it's a round lug, uh, so most likely I think it's probably a uh, paper label plum. Um, I like the shape of it. I like the geometry of it. Um, kind of more of a wedge grind or wedge profile than a, uh, a high center line, but it's nice and thick. Um, If anything on here gives it away as far as the maker, please let me know, guys. <laughs> um, but, like I said, it does have that uh, triangle stamp, too, um, which is common with, you know, you see it in a lot of plums. So, another thing to make me believe that it was probably a paper label at one point. Obviously, the paper, paper label's long gone, but uh, it's still a nice head either way. If I remember correctly, I think this one's just over, uh, or just under four pounds. So it's definitely a little bit on the heavier side. I think this one would look really cool on like a, either a straight handle or maybe like a lumberman's handle. Um, I do want to try carving one of those at some point, so maybe that'll be in a future video. But yeah. All oiled up. You see some kind of. I, I wouldn't say that's rust pitting there. At least here, I would say that's probably forge scale marks. So a little bit on the rougher side. Um, see the original grind lines on there when they flattened it out. The top here makes me think it may have been cast, but it could also just be from like the forging dies. So yeah, paper label. Uh, what am I call paper label? Plum, round lug jersey. Next we have a Collins, uh, Legitimus. It's a Dayton pattern, it's a heavy one. Um, I think it's probably over a little over four pounds right now. Um, the battery's dead on my little scale, so. <laughs> tricky weighing it, but uh, I weighed it at some point in the past. I can't remember exactly what uh, what it weighed, but it's, it's, it's on the heavier side. The stamp's pretty clean. Um, you can see that pretty decently. A um, little bit of rough around uh, some of the edges. Make a good candidate for cleaning something up.
bit's fairly uh, fairly good shape. Not too, a little bit more worn in the toe than the heel. Um, and both of them a little worn back a little bit, but not terrible. Definitely, uh, definitely able to be fixed and sorted out. I don't really collect uh, legitimuses, but uh, I know a lot of guys do. Um, that's just one that was a, a good deal and kind of found its way into my collection. So this is one that I had shown in my Craftsman collection, and I believe also it followed me home. So it's a four pound uh, oval stamp Craftsman. Bought this one at a flea market um, south of me. I had gone with my wife one of the times. One of the guy had a, a whole booth there where he was selling some uh, some axes that he rehung. Uh, they were just on. They were <laughs> they were hung, but they were hung with a lot of nails and uh, not super great wedging and stuff like that. So uh, they were, I guess, usable. The, the head was tight, but it was just filled with a bunch of bunch of stuff. This is actually the the head that I used or was in the uh, I can't remember if it was a short or just a shorter shorter video where I was just pulling all of those nails out of it. Uh, that was the head from it. This was on the uh, legitimus theme. Here's my Legitimus Connie. Again, I don't collect them, but being an axe collector, I feel like it's kind of hard not to have a few uh, Legitimuses end up in your collection at some point. <laughs> it's in decent condition. A um, little bit of, uh, you know, not terrible. A little bit of pole damage. Um, Again, this is probably at the stage where I wouldn't bother fixing it for you know, myself um, if I'm just hanging it. Maybe, because I, I, this is such a clean stamp, I wouldn't want to risk one losing the patina or two damaging the stamp on it. So I would just leave this one most likely. Can't remember if I found a weight stamp on this one at all or not. I don't think so. It's probably about three and a half pounds. One of the differences that I did notice on the Collins um, Connecticut patterns versus like the plums is that the the Collins is they still have a high center line, but it's not nearly as high as the um, the plums. So depending on what you're looking for in a in a vintage you know Connecticut pattern, um, that might help steer you in the direction of one or the other. Yeah, clean head, neat. I don't know if I'll ever hang this one or if I just kind of keep it, keep it loose. I go back and forth with like, uh, you know, I've got all these uh, these these heads in the collection. I don't know if I'll ever actually hang them all. Probably not. Um, maybe in <laughs> forty years when I get to retire, but <laughs> for right now. Um, you know, it's kind of nice having some loose heads in the collection, too. So this one here, it is a True Temper. World's Finest. Kelly Works. It's a hatchet size head. A um, little smaller eye than a boy's axe. You can tell there was, you know, a bit of pole damage at one point and someone had cleaned it up and it was long ago enough that it's formed some patina over it now. Um, you see the bit here. It's in ground quite evenly. A little bit of toe jam. So if you hear someone refer to an axe having toe jam, so the toe is worn a little bit back, further back, or ground a little bit further back than the heel. Um, 
but it's definitely not so far back that you couldn't even this out. So, yeah. I love this this, uh, this style stamp from uh, the World's Finest. I know a lot of other guys do too, so popular with collectors. And then here, this is one I've had in the collection for a while. Um, another round lug. What I believe to be plum, um, especially with the big square sticker here and the black paint. And when I did get this, uh, had it did have a remnant of a handle in it. And when I drove it out, um, it did have that signature red paint on it. So all of the, uh, the clues would point me to believe that this is a paper label plum. Probably more modern production. Um, it doesn't really have that high of a center line, but it's in really pretty good condition. The poles really not damaged much at all. No weight stamp or anything on it. Um, this is another heavy one. I think it's just under four pounds. I know I weighed it and, and at some point. And if I go back and look at old pictures or videos, I could probably <laughs> figure out the weight is, but I'm not too concerned about that right now. It's a heavier one. Decent amount of that original black paint's left. Darkens up nicely with that oil, huh? Yeah, it's a nice one. I haven't hung it yet. Um, clearly, uh, it's, it's been it's been one I've toyed around with, uh, you know, doing a build for selling or I don't know. It's kind of a nice one to have in the collection too. But there's a number of ones that I enjoy having in the collection, but persuaded to <laughs> you know trade or something else too. I could a lot of them I could be uh, you know tempted to let go of. If the trades are something that I, you know, want even more. There's a few in the head in the collection, though, that are, you know, not going to go anywhere. Some favorites. All right, starting to near the end here. At least of the loose, loose heads, actually. That's not true. I've got a bucket of some, <laughs> some trade ones, too. So right. this is one that I found uh, local, too. It's plum. Square box. Square corner, Michigan pattern, um, obviously. It's in really nice condition, um, besides the pitting. Stamped NYS with the triangle on the back, which is, if you remember, again, makes me think that this guy here is a plum. <laughs> And I've heard various explanations as to what the triangle is. Some people have said it's from uh, manufacturer different sites. Some people have said it's uh, a designation for like quality levels. Some people have said it's for uh, an indication for export to other companies. I, I haven't seen any like actual documentation as to what the, the reasoning was, but it's neat. <laughs> it's a good way to help identify what some of the, you know, some of the patterns uh, are if they don't have the actual maker stamp on them. And this is one that's, uh, like I said, it was pitted. Um, it was pitted, but it looks like it was really barely ever used or abused. So it's the 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 head itself is in very good condition, with the exception of the, uh, you know, the pitting. Like New York State kind of pops once you get the oil on it. It's kind of cool, especially being me, you know, me being in New York State. Um, and this is one that I had found at the, uh, the local flea market up north too, the one that I, that I did the video on uh, touring, so. Cool one. Mm 
So, big fan of the plums because they have that nice high center line. Just really like the geometry on them. Goes down to a nice keen edge. This would make a great user if I ever hung it. I doubt I will, but it's a neat head to have in the collection. Now, a, uh, an American Axe made in Glassport, PA. Um, this one's a bit worn in the bits. Um, the bits are worn fairly evenly. They're just short a bit. Um, still a neat head overall, though. It's one that I was kind of watching the auction on. There wasn't any bids. Threw a bid out last second. Just kind of a, a low ball one. And ended up <laughs> winning, so... Got it. It's one I definitely uh, consider trading. It's kind of cool. I like the kind of like the patina on it. I think it may have uh, been evapo rust, uh, soaked in evapo rust at some point, but it's kind of starting to get some of that other patina back, and it's kind of almost got like a bronzy color to it, which is neat. Stamp three, three. So that'll be three and three quarter pounds. Yeah. All right. And then we've got our Snow and Neely. I think it's a wedge pattern. I can't remember if it was a full wedge, half wedge. I, honestly, I'm not very well versed in the, the wedge patterns. I, it's a snow and nearly. <laughs> um, see here, it's three and quarter pounds. The toe's a little bit worn on it, but not terrible. Could definitely be, be leveled out a little. Make a good user. Pulls a little damaged. Um, again, it's probably not at the level where I'd try to fix it, but I wouldn't want to um, get rid of that stamp either. So I would be inclined to just leave it on this one also. Or at the very least, not go as heavy on this side and clean up that side more, but it's not too bad, so I'd probably leave it. That's a neat one. I think I've said that about every head that I've picked up. It's like, yeah, it's a neat one. It's a neat one. <laughs> I mean, clearly I think they're all neat. They made their way into my collection. and <laughs> I like axes, so shouldn't be a surprise. An interesting lineup here, too. So here we have a, another Connecticut pattern. Again, kind of similar to the Plum uh, Dayton pattern. This is a three-pound. Not, you know, the, there's... There's no two there. This is just straight three. Slightly smaller head. Um, full size eye still, so it's not a boy's axe, but it could definitely serve as one um, for sure. That kind of general philosophy of use, if you want to call it that. Um, it's plum. A little bit of damage on the pole, but not nothing crazy. It'd probably clean up pretty decent. Toes a little bit worn, but it's not quite even, but I think that could get sorted out. A little bit of chipping along the edge, but the majority of where the chipping is is at the heel end where it would get evened out a little bit anyway. So I think this can make a really nice, uh, really nice axe in the future at some point.
maybe potential build video. And, and because there isn't much pitting on this one, this is one that I would consider doing like a, and the fact that I'd be like evening this out and, you know, fixing the pole. Then I'd do more of like a full, full sanding, full polish, bluing. A little bit of pitting here, but not terrible. And the fact that it's on the non, non stamp side means you know you can go a little more aggressive with sanding the side and not have it, you know, contribute to losing a stamp. So, so this is another axe that appeared in I think a couple other videos. So I think it was in one of my Rockaway pattern videos, like identification of Rockaway, Rockaway versus Jersey. Can't remember what I titled it, but um, this one was in there. And also, I think it was in a, it followed me home. But yeah, it's a. If I can get it on the uh, stamp there, so Kelly works. You can see the a little pointer here. You can see the the K E L L Y Kelly Axe. Pro says Kelly Axe and Tool Co. Um, if you look here, it looks like there was a some kind of number stamping, so maybe it was part of I don't know what <laughs> some kind of you know service truck or something like that designated to a truck at some point. Um, it looks to me as like probably the tops of zeros. So it's like zero zero one zero zero. Looks like zero zero one to me, but. Yeah, let me know if you can kind of pick out what you think or what you see. All right there. Yeah, top of the zero, top of the zero, and something there. Uh, I don't think the red paint is original. Talk with some other guys, they, they kind of agree. I like it, but I don't think it's original. So, yeah, it's a cool one. It's a, it's, you know... Rockaway pattern. I'm a big fan of the Rockaways, so I like it. I think it'd make a nice, uh, nice user at some point too. Again, another one where I, I wouldn't really bother um, trying to fix the damage on the pole because one, I, don't, I like the paint on it, so I don't want to lose the paint. Um, and on the stamp side, what remnants of the you know the Kelly X and you know Kelly and then the A. That's about all I can make out of it. Um, so I wouldn't want to lose that, you know, an, identif an identifying uh, mark. So I'd leave it. I'd leave it and just use it as is. It's a little bit on the lighter side. I think it's probably close to three pounds ish. So, and again, another uh, Tommy axe. <laughs> yeah, shouldn't come to a surprise to anyone that. I've got a few of these kicking around. And this one, um, one of, you know, plan on keeping in the collection just because it's, it's in decent shape. A little bit of, uh, you know, surface rust and a little bit of pitting, but nothing crazy. Pulls in decent shape, um, but it also has both claws. So, and it doesn't really look like it's been ground down too much. That might be... Yeah, it might even be the factory edge, honestly, but yeah, just a nice example of a Tommy X. All right, last two on the rack here. I'm gonna get another one kicking around the bench because I ran out of room on the rack. <laughs> so first, a Keen Cutter Carpenter's Hatchet. Stamps pretty deep. Little rough for the rough around the edges, but it, it would clean up nice. So, future project at some point. This one was in a trade, not trade, uh, a group of axes that I bought on eBay. I was I was after. Can't remember what one it came with, but it, it was uh, in a group of two or three axes. And it was after the other one, so this is kind of just a nice little, nice little bonus. 
So those are like the king cutter stamp. I think it's cool. I'd love it on a full size axe at some point. But a lot of times when I come across these on eBay, the stamps are really beat up. I think they saw a lot of hard use, a lot of them, as most axes did, so. Yeah, the bit's fairly worn. Um, worn decently evenly, so it's still got some life left in it, but it's a little, little bit towed. See some marks where someone had it uh, in some you know, vice for some jaws that uh, weren't using soft jaws. So. Some little battle scars. Gives a character though. Hammer, uh, hammer pulls a little mushroomed. That could clean up. Especially since there's no cracks. No cracks or real big chips on it. This is a nice little plum hatchet. I like this one because it doesn't have the uh, the pot hook um, or wire breaker or whatever you want to call them. And I don't they don't really nail pull whatever you want to call them. I, in my mind, if it's a camp axe, it makes sense that it's a pot hook. Um, but call them what you want. I like that this doesn't have it. <laughs> so there's a nice little Dayton pattern hatchet. Some of the original uh, black paint on it. Get it oiled up so it pops a little more. Original black paint that's left. Pole's not too damaged at all. Didn't see any weight stamps on it, but again, like I said before, I, I don't usually see weight stamps on the poles for hatchets for some reason. It seems to mostly just be full size axes. So I'm not too surprised I don't see one. Don't see one under there either. But yeah, it's got a nice overall patina to it. Really no pitting. I'm not sure if some of those grinds were from the factory or previous user, but the, the bit's pretty full. Again, needs to be evened out a little bit, but not bad. Yeah, I've actually got a billet of... Uh, Black Locust, and I've started cutting a handle pattern out of a, for this one that I, or at least I planned to do a, you know, handle carving video at some point for this, so. Another project down the road. And this one. Another one that uh, <laughs> I picked up a while back off of eBay. Um, it was one that was, uh, it was a good deal. It was a, a auction that I was watching and weren't many bids on it and threw a low ball one out there at the end and ended up winning it. Um, when the seller was selling it, they didn't specify the weight. So I wasn't sure if it was a boy's axe size, full size, you know, could have been five pounds, could have been four pounds, could have been one pound. <laughs> they didn't say, didn't give any dimensions. Um, but I liked the stamp on it enough that I didn't really care how much it weighed. Uh, we're going to pick it up either way. That's one that I wanted to clean up, but just never got around to. That's why I never uh, oiled it up. I think this would be another one that would do, be a good candidate for a uh, full sanding, full polish. Not polish, but a, a nice even sanding all around. Where I actually go through and take the time and try to get all of the scratch marks out and, and grinder marks out and nice even scratch pattern, 100%, um, because there really isn't um, any significant pitting on this axe. Pull damage a little bit, but it's pretty minimal. Um, and it's high enough that I don't think it would damage the 
stamp cleaning it up. It has that F4 designation. Um, really similar to uh, or the same designation as some of the Craftsman hatchets that I have or axes that I have. So my guess is that they're probably made by the same manufacturer. If you know who, who manufactured axes for uh, gambles back in the day, let me know. I, my guess is it's probably man. Um, but if you have details on that, let me know. I like the kind of the bevels that they uh, ground in there. I think it looks cool. Yeah, I think this would make a nice boys axe build. So we have exhausted the loose heads on the rack. Um, now we've moved on to this uh, this um this box that I've made. Uh, it's just on some scrap plywood that I had, uh, but I needed a place to put more of my overflow heads. Um, so this is kind of the box that, in general, I use for like a. These are the ones that I would definitely trade, definitely sell. Don't really have any attachment to them. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> the ones that I didn't find special enough to put on the rack. Let's put it that way. So let's go through them one by one. Uh, so it's Collins. This is just a pretty standard, more modern um, Michigan pattern. Still got some of the blue paint. I'm just flat ground really no no high center line at all this is when i found it at the local flea market i think it was like i don't, know, I don't even remember what i paid for it but it was cheap enough that i was like yeah why not just pick it up <laughs> the chances are it's probably like under a 15 dollar mark A little bit of rust that's uh, kind of eaten away at the toe on that side, but it'd still make a perfectly fine user. Now, there's really nothing wrong with it. It's it's just a little bit pitted, a little bit, a little bit used, but still a perfectly uh, usable, serviceable axe. I'll leave that off to the side here. Keeps wanting to fall over. Next one is a another Collins. This was also one that I picked up at the uh, flea market. This is one that was pretty decently rusted, so I had kind of sanded it forever ago and uh, blued it through a layer of uh, cold blue on it. This one, um, fairly flatly ground, but it does, camera want to focus here. It does have a higher center line. Um, so I'm not quite sure the age on it, but not a bad, uh, bad Michigan pattern. I'm getting this one now that uh, I've got a little bit more practice under my belt and uh, more experience with bluing and, and sanding that I'd probably go back and clean up. I think I could even out... Um, even out some of those marks quite a bit and, and the scratch patterns on it too. So yeah, I could probably uh, do a better job now, but it's not bad as it is. Pull's nice and clean. I don't remember how bad the pull was when I got it and if I, how much I had kind of cleaned it up. It looks like there's a bit of a bump right before the stamping. So my guess is the pole had some decent damage on it. This is years ago, so I don't really remember. Just a no-name um, boys axe. No stamping on it for any kind of... Uh, identification no ridges in the eyes so i don't think it's a wood slasher but it does have 
a nice high center line. Seems to be really well made. I haven't taken a file to it, so I don't know how the steel is, but it's got all the signs of a well-made axe. So my guess is that it's a bit older. Um, no idea how old, but it would make a really good user. Never even really took the, uh, the wire wheel to it either. So maybe there's something faint hiding under that surface rust, but I don't, I don't see any indications of anything. Next is a Connecticut pattern. This was just an impulse buy. Um, the seller had not great pictures of it um, listed in the description. They said it was a Douglas Axe. So I was like, oh, well, it was cheap enough that I rolled the dice on it, hoping there was going to be some kind of stamp. There wasn't. <laughs> I think they probably, whoever the seller was, probably just saw that, you know, Douglas Axe is especially Connecticut patterns sold for a higher amount and they just wanted to call this one, but it wasn't, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. There's no stampings on it. Um, it looks like an older Connecticut pattern, just especially with how much that eye or the, the pole tapers back down, but the eye is bulged. Well, at least I think it's bulged. Uh, my assumption is that it would be a little bit more narrow, but maybe if it, with it being an older X, Whatever uh, drift they used was a bit wider because it's fairly even, but Next one, I'm not gonna bother oiling this one up, <laughs> but uh, it's that really big Connecticut pattern um, that has that cracked, that really bulged eye, terrible pole damage, um, and that, that little crack there starting there. So I don't weld. I'd like to learn how to do it at some point, but this one needs a lot of love if it's a uh, <laughs> gonna get back in fighting shape so yeah just kind of someone really likes doing that for a project let me know <laughs> that was one that i found local too this is another one that i had found uh, a local so the only markings are cast steel and that round touch mark um, the toe's a bit worn. I would call it a Kentucky pattern. It's heavy. Um, so, yeah, I think I think it's a little over four pounds. Big heavy pole though, probably make a good wedge banger, honestly. So that wouldn't be too bad if you kind of evened up the uh, toe jam on it.
The next was one that I found down at the uh, flea market. I think it was in one of my Follow Me Home videos. So it's a True Temper Kelly Perfect uh, with the Phantom Bevels. Um, definitely rusted, definitely a little pitted, but it is a Kelly Perfect. Michigan pattern, if you haven't picked those out by now, or you're still learning. Those bubbles pop nice, so. A little bit of pull damage, but nothing nothing terrible. And again, the nice thing about the, uh, the stamping being down lower is if you wanted to take this and clean it up nicely, you're not risking losing the stamp doing so. Alright, last and maybe least, <laughs> this is one that I also got in a uh, group buy on eBay. It's a, what I would call a modern Mich Michigan, um, which means it's kind of like a bastardized Michigan. <laughs> I would say this is a, uh, this is like a good example of a traditional Michigan pattern, where this is like a modern hardware storage version. Um, it's a master mechanic. Got part of the label left. Um, someone had soaked it in vinegar or something at some point. I don't think I show had this one in a follow me home video, but it was it was pretty it was pretty rusty when I got it. Um, so I took the wire wheel to it. It's got some pull damage. And if I were to clean that up, you would lose the master mechanic. Um, stamp. Yeah. If you if you want to practice grinding on heads or need a beater axe or something like that, this would probably be a good one. Um, not super desirable, but still a nice heavy head. pause here and grab some more loose heads because I think I have some more kicking around. All right, so as far as loose heads go, I think this is it. There's definitely the possibility that there's one kicking around the shop or a few of them kicking around the shop somewhere hidden under a box or board or something like that that I haven't seen, but I think this is all of them. So, this is one that I plan on uh, hanging probably sooner than later. It's a Pulaski if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, it's True Temper Flint Edge Kelly Works 3 3. I know I did the uh, kind of pitted Pulaski build. Um, but I might end up hanging, grabbing a handle, um, and hanging this one as a user too, just because the handle on that pitted one. I straightened it out, but after sitting in the garage, it kind of warped again. Um, so, yeah, I might just kind of forego that one and uh, pass that head along to another home and kind of turn this into my uh, user out in the yard. A little bit fuller bit. So, yeah. And this here is a brush axe. If you don't know what that is, uh, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> um, I've never actually used one, but I found this one 
at uh, that local flea market. Um, and it is a council tool. It was on the original handle when I got it. Um, I actually bought it because I wanted the handle. <laughs> Um, but never ended up doing anything with the handle. Um, I just kind of took this brush axe off it and uh, it really just sat in the, the cabinet. Um, I'm thinking about just putting this back together kind of how I found it and uh, getting it in use for using as a brush axe because in upstate New York here, um, the brush in the springtime it grows up so quick and uh, at, the, at the edge of the yard when you kind of live out in the country you're constantly just kind of like trying to mow and kind of beat it back where you're each time you mow it kind of keeps encroaching in on the yard encroaching in on the yard so having a brush axe which you kind of get similar to like a kind of like a machete but um for a little heavier brush So yeah, I'm not sure if you can see the, the stamp there, but console tool. And I'll grab the handle here. So this was the original handle that was on it. Pretty neat looking. And I just I just liked the handle, so like that's what that's what initially caught my eye. Um, wanted to repurpose this for like a a rafter or something like that. A little bit of overstrike damage there. So I don't know if it'd be too usable, but maybe. But I kind of like the idea of having this back on the original handle too. I don't know. Let me know what you would what, what you, you would do. Would you kind of fix this handle up to use for an axe or would you keep it on a brush axe? Um I go back and forth because I like the idea of keeping keeping these together because they're original, you know, like keeping them as a set. But this kind of old vintage handle with, uh, with this nice patina and weather on it, I think it'd look really cool on an axe too. So, I don't know. I could be persuaded either way. <laughs> but that's a future decision to make, <laughs> not one right now. Um, so then the last loose head was the other one that we found in the uh, last trip to the uh, flea market. So it was a True Temper Flint Edge. Boy's Axe, maybe a house axe size. Um, I think that eye is a little bit smaller than a um, boy's axe size. So I'd say it's probably like a heavy hatchet, but I think it would make a very nice boy's axe. Love the taper on that pole too. Reminds me a lot of the Connecticut patterns. But this is a Dayton, a Dayton pattern. Even though it's rusty, let's just throw some oil on it. We'll still clean it up down the road, but the general thinking is that <laughs> I keep buying these axes and telling myself, oh, don't bother oiling them because I'll get around to fixing them up soon. And then I don't. So the general rule should just be oil it. And then if I want to blow it down the road, that's what brake cleaners for. I think this one will clean up really nice. I'm excited to do some kind of build with this. That might, that might, that might end up being one of the more sooner upcoming projects. Wow. So I, mean, I just like that head. So that's uh, wrap this up for uh, part two of the axe uh, collection and oiling we kind of covered all the loose heads i've got a couple um like splitting mall heads but i'm not gonna bother showing those they're they're absolutely nothing special so yeah stay tuned for part three and probably part four honestly where i'll uh kind of cover the stuff that's on handles <laughs> thanks for watching uh comment on any of the heads that you see and uh, you know spark any discussion or maybe you got some favorites in here you know let me know 
I'm curious. I uh, there's definitely some in there that I had forgotten about. <laughs> um, so yeah, stay tuned for the uh, upcoming parts, and uh, we're making good. A little sneak peek. We're we're making good progress on hanging that uh, that Connecticut pattern that I did the cleanup on. So I've got it almost all the way seated. Yeah, so thanks for watching, everyone. Appreciate it. Appreciate all the, uh, the support and the comments. So stay tuned for more to come.